Hello everyone, my name is Hong Li. Uh, today's presentation is about the antibiotics dosing in the OB patients. Uh, this is a short presentation because there's not much information about it, but uh, it's worth to talk about. Uh, let's look into the, uh, the definition of the obesity. Uh, this is from the, the WHO. <coughs> they look into that and we use like we are uh, they consider the obese when the uh, TBMI the over the 30 uh, obese class 1 obese class 2 uh, obese class 3 the class 3 is uh, like uh, the BMI is over 40 kilogram per uh, meter square and uh, <coughs> that's it over the 190 percent of the uh, patient's ideal, ideal body weight and the class 3 consider the morbid, uh, morbidly the obese and this is the, the formula to calculate the ideal body weight uh, for male and female that we all know about <coughs> and the, the reason is uh, we use a 30 uh, kilogram per the meter square to divide that uh, the patient at the obese because that, that's the CDC that when they did uh, the survey the next uh, slide from the 1985 to the, like the 2007 this is the, the pictures of the whole country and uh, the show from the 1985 that we don't have a, like about the seven to eight states that have about the population about 10 to 14 percent above with the BMI more than 30 percent of 30 <coughs> but the 12 to 13 years later this is completely changed and now we have uh, like uh, uh, the state that actually have uh, like 10 to 15 percent of our population with a BMI over the 30s now that becomes a major um, the very bad ones and the the one that's have a 15 to 19 percent is actually the many of them and Florida is a, well one of them and uh, of course uh, these states are like Alaska uh, they see the Tennessee Louisiana <laughs> as uh, more than 20 percent of their population we are solely obese Yeah, this is the 1998. Let's see the 2007. Uh, now the 2007, it gets works, uh, and then estimated the 60 million people actually the obese according to the CDC, uh, and uh, I think it's uh, Alabama uh, sometimes over here, and that's it's uh, over 30. Yeah, yes, so. Most of the half, more than half of the states actually uh, with uh, more than uh, like 25 percent of their population actually obese. So we, it means that we might see the like at least one out of four of our patients actually the uh, obese with a BMI of more than 30. <coughs> Let's look into this guy. This guy, so if we give the a cephalosporin, why he if he the hip hop guy go into you get the accident, get into the ER, they give the cephalosporin one gram for surgical prophylaxis. That's a very standard dose. But how about this guy? Is he gonna get? <laughs> is he gonna get the same dose <laughs> or not? So <coughs> we don't sure same dose or higher dose. And what is the dose? So there's a couple of the study regarding to the like uh, dosing in the obese patients. That's why I want to bring it up. But before we um, we go into the like uh, the study, let's review a few the pharmacodynamics and the pharmacokinetics um, uh, concepts. <coughs> Usually, we in when we increase the dose, it adjust the dose. It's affect on the, the ratio of the CMAC over the MIC or the the AUC over the MIC. If we change the manner. <coughs> Manipulate the intervals. It can affect more the, the ratio of an AUC over the MIC or the time over the MIC. If we change the increase the infusion time, then the the ratio is only the got affected is the time over the MIC. <coughs> and that's when a cow when we start dosing of the patients. 
we look into the uh, pharmacokinetic, when we look into the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination to see the whether the bees actually affect on which the process. For the absorption, actually the, with the PO mat, there's no the significant difference between the like uh, the absorption between the obese and non-obese patients. Uh, and if we give the patient the IV the, um, medication, then there's no such uh, uh, problem about the uh, absorptions. However, on the distribution, there's uh, some the problem. Um, it's affected by the lipophilicity of the drugs, and also the, on the, by the tissue blood flow. Uh, there's just one the study, uh, Russell and Associates, they found that 100 grams of fat it got about like 20 to 30 uh, ml of the blood per minute so that account for the five percent of the cardiac output and he also said that the hydrophilic antibiotic not influenced by the fat weight and that's uh, reasonable we know that uh, only the lipophilic is more the affected by the influence by the fat weight and also the distribution also affected by the body composition and the plasma protein binding is it on the uh, the theory the, but in the clinical it's, it's not easy to assess the plasma binding for the metabolism uh, whether the drug in the metabolite uh, faster or the slower or the same compared to the obese patient and non-obese patient there's uh, no the data about that so we we don't know for eliminations um, their study said that uh, Obesity actually the effect on the GFR, so the GFR usually higher. So there are two things that we know that distributions and elimination actually have uh, the obes obesity has uh, some effect on those. <laughs> so that's why when for the obese patient we always assess to the drug clearance, that elimination, and also the volume distribution. And these are the two uh, pha two pharmacokinetic uh, parameters. I look into the volume distribution. What does a factor actually actually affect on the volume distributions? Uh, the volume distribution, if you see in the packet insert when you open the PDR, the, the PDR, the physician that's in there, uh, you will see the the volume distribution. But that's based on the uh, population estimate, and that's not a will not account for the obesity. And the volume distribution to, uh, is determined by the volume of the blood, the, the volume of the body tissue, and the binding of the antibiotic to the tissue versus the blood. And of course, it's affected by the obese, and it depends on the drug affinity to the fat tissue and the quantity of the fat tissue. So, the clearance. We know that obesity does affect the clearance. So there's many the different uh, formulas out there to how to calculate the creatinine clearance. So the most common uh, the formula that had been used is Cockcroft and Goff, but for this uh, it's not really accurate for the accurate for the in the obese patient. <coughs> Uh, and uh, you know that the most the study they use the uh, Cockcroft and Goff to calculate the creatinine clearance. So that that keep in mind. But uh, usually, more many study they don't have uh, like um, their populations a study power subject not included uh, the obese patient. The MDRD, the modification of diet in the renal disease. This formula, it doesn't account for the weight factors. But this, uh, uh, this formula is not extensively studied in the obese patients. The third formula is the Salazar Cochrane. This formula has been studied, and they think that this is the best uh, formula out there to calculate the clearance in the in the obese patients. The the formula is kind of com complex with the age. We have to account for the age the weight and the high mm, and the most the pharmacokinetic textbooks actually account for like use like uh, subject uh, the use of Salazar Cochrane to calculate the uh, creatinine clearance for the patient who has who actually obese with uh, the BMI over 30 and that's what we at pharmacy we use this formula instead of Cochrane and Gov uh, for the obese patient
So let's go into the different class of the antibiotic to see the um, what we have to do for the deal with when we deal with the obese patients. For the uh, two, the group of the antibiotic have been studied a lot is aminoglycoside and the vancomycin. There's many studies out there regarding to the pharmacokinetics on the normal, non-obese and obese patients. So we have a lot of data about these two groups. Uh, for the aminoglycoside, we know that it's a weight-based dosing and the volume distribution obese patient, the big uh, the, uh, and heavy patient, the big, the fat patient, we have the increase of the volume distribu of the distribution about uh, like 50%. Uh, so the dose, there's a couple studies show that if we use the total body weight, then we tend to overshoot uh, the desired concentration. This means that we can uh, overdose the patients. <coughs> and they recommend that you use the adjusted body weight with the correction factor is a 0.4 that the account the difference uh, the, the difference between the the total body weight and uh, the ideal body weight and we just get that different and we time to the 0.4 that's a correction the, the interval so with uh, with amino glycoside we have to increase the dose of course for the obese patient but the interval should we keep the same or we shorten the interval or we increase the interval we know that the elimination rate content is the ratio between the creatine inclusion over the uh, volume of the distribution. So that's the v <coughs> the clearance over the VD. And there's an increase of the clearance. And there's also that increase of volume distribution. So there's the offset between this. So we don't have uh, the elimination rate constant is the same so with that rate is the same it means the half line is almost the same that's why we keep the same interval for the penicillin we have a couple uh, we, n we don't have um, many the articles regarding to the dosing. Most of them are the small uh, pharmacokinetic dosing and also the summer case report. For Amica for ampicillin, if you see that there's no the justification over here, or say that no adjustment is mean doesn't mean that there's actually there's no adjustment because we just don't have a data, so that's why we say that no adjustment. Ampicillin had no adjustment. Uh, with the unicin, we use the correction factor is a 0.3, it's like the 0.4 like uh, amino glycoside. With the napcillin. There's in for the obese patient, there's the increase of a volume distribution. So uh, you see that if we use uh, in the normal paper patients, we use a 2 gram Q4, but in the obese patient, you will see the dose change at 3 gram Q6 instead of 2 gram. It, of course, the total daily dose is the same 12 gram a day, but uh, that change. For PNG, we don't have that. And uh, for the zosin, most of the, the article, the public before the 2007, you will see that they said that no adjustment based on the um, for the zosin in the obese patient. But there's one case report in 2007, and that case report related to the one patient with 167 kilogram, and Newman and us found that there to reduce the serum concentration. What dose did he give uh, to this patient? It's uh, dosing 3.375 gram Q6, and he found that it reduced serum concentration. That's why I put a question mark whether we should adjust. But he didn't recommend whether we should increase it to the uh, from the 3.375 to the 4. 0.5 gram Q6 or not? He didn't manage. Uh, he didn't recommend it, or he didn't mention. At least he didn't mention about that. So it's just up to uh, to us to see that whether we should increase or not. For Timantin, there's no data for it. For cephalosporin, we know that for the cefazolin, for the obese patient, because. It has a lower serum and fat tissue concentration, so we usually we double up the uh, the, uh, the dose. So with the obese patient, we use two grams instead of one gram for surgical prophylaxis. For cefepim, cefotaxim, uh, ceftriaxone, 
there's a sum the change it into the into the composition of fat factors and the distribution so they recommend to use the correlation factor of the 0 0.3 how do we do this how do we do this if we know that for example the CPP 1 gram Q12 right and based on that normal patient, non-obese patients. So now we got the obese patient, how do we calculate the dose? This is said that, okay, we have to dose based on the adjusted body weight, and adjusted body weight is equal to the ideal body weight that we can calculate it, and this is the correct, correlate, uh, correction factor, that point three that we know, and the difference between the total body weight and the ideal body weight. So these are calculated, but how do you translate the ideal bo adjusted body weight over here into the, the dose? What dose we gonna give? Uh, instead of one gram Q12, now we have to try make it two gram or not? So this is the, this is, there's no preference for this, but this based on the my, learning from the other the pharmacists. They said that take the regular dose for the um, and use it and divide it by the ideal body weight and then you have uh, the milligram over the kilogram and use that number and the multiply to the adjusted body weight. That it come up with the the total like, daily dose or the dose that the patient should receive that, that how much you should increase. For the capampenum, uh, actually there's imipenum, meropenum. There's no no adjustment. The reason is why because these two drugs have a short half life, so that's why it's uh, because the short half life. So there's no much, uh, not much the impact of the AUC over the MIC or the Tmax or Cmax over the MIC. So because of that, so we don't do the like uh, dosage adjustment, but Ertapenum. Ertapenum is different because Ertapenum we know is a Q24. It has a longer half life. So there's a study by chance. He found that the AUC decrease in the obese if we use a one gram per day. And how much we should increase? Uh, he didn't uh, say that how much we have to increase. Maybe we use 1.5. Maybe we use two. So it depends. We are there's no. For the Doripenum, it's a new. Um, like, uh, Capapenum and there's no data for it, but to remember it, it it will it regularly we dose it with the Q8. The say similarly to the meropenum, it means that it have a short half life, so maybe there are no dosage adjustment needed for the doripenum. For the quinolone, I found only the uh, one what one article regarding to the dosing of the ciprofloxacin. In the obese patients, the volume of distribution increased like 23% and it have a lower Cmax, so that's why we have to increase the dose for the Cipro uh, in the obese patient. And this is how we adjust the dose using the ideal body weight and with the correction factor is uh, 0 0.45. So, so far you see that uh, some the uh, aminoglycoside correction factor is a 0.4, uh, mm, cefazolin uh, of the Cephalosporin, the correction factor is a 0.3, and this is the highest one. Correction point factor is a 0 0.0, so 0 0.45, ah, uh, 0.45. For the level and moxi, we don't have the uh, any the like information regarding to the the dosing. For macrolide, azithromycin, we don't have our data. So there's no dosage adjustment recommended, but with erythromycin, there's no that we dose by the ideal body weight. So regardless the patient obese or non-obese, we can have the same dose. Now the vancomycin, we use it a lot. So with the vancomycin, it's signif uh, the volume distribution significant increase in the obese patient. It means that when the volume distribution increase, it means that we have to use the increase the dose. How much we should increase? And the study found that uh, volume distribution correlates better with the total body weight 
rather than adjusted body weight. So that's why the, we use the total body weight to dose of the patient. If the patient weighs 100, we get 100. Uh, or the Dr. Allen said if the patient weighs uh, 700 pounds, about like uh, 350 kilograms, we have to use like that much to calculate it. This means that the pharmacy go bankrupt for that. <laughs> and of course, we use the Salada Cochrane formula to estimate the clearance. And we monitor the level. For the daptomycin, we use it now. Recently, we use it a lot. We have, uh, uh, and they had study found that it's increased with the volume distribution and the clearance in the obese. So it means that when you see the volume distribution and clearance both increase, it means that the interval is not changing. However, and the study subject, uh, when they they make the study, they look into the study subject of the clinical phase three clinical trial. The study subject weighted up to the 147 kilogram. So we in the safe range. Uh, if we, the patient doesn't go beyond that range, so empirically dosing in the, the um, obese patient, we still use the Salah Cochrane formula to estimate the clearance, and we use the total body weight to dose. Of course, we monitor the CPK. So far, so good. Vanco, total body weight. Daptomycin, the total body weight. We don't have to calculate much. How about the Tiger Seal? The Tiger Seal, that um, when they manuf manufacture, they conduct a study. That that's a study subject weighted up to two, uh, weighted up to two hundred kilograms. So we are on the same side, and they already uh, calculate account for the weight increase. So. We keep the same dose, no dose adjustment in the obese patient, 1 gram IV1 and then 50 milligram Q12. How about the linezolate? Uh, for the PO the linezolate, uh, one study found that uh, still have a low uh, serum concentration, however, the MIC is still about 4, so that's why in the obese patient we still don't adjust for the linezolate. So we're still using the 600 mg Q12. For synthesis, we have one patient that we are using on, on the synthesis right now. And the volume distribution is similar between the obese and non-obese. And it tends to distribute more in the lean body mass than into fat tissue. However, they still recommend you use the total their body weight for the dosing. And this is the regular dose, uh, 7.5 kilogram, milligram per kilogram, Q8. We're almost there. OK, atrial numbers. Atrionum is the lipophilic drugs. So in the obese patients, we sh is it recommended to use the high, uh, there's no the, like a high special dose for it, but they recommend to use the upper end of the dosing range in the morbidly obese patients, serious infection. The dosing range is one to two gram, give six to eight. So we use the two gram, give six for the morbidly obese patients. The max dose is the eight gram a day. Other antibiotics uh, we use over here some, sometimes uh, Septra, Flagyl, Doxycycline, Clindamycin. Uh, those, there's no data, so we don't know the whether what dose we should give. We know the one thing that Doxycycline is the lipophilic drug. It distributes more into the, the fat tissue, but with the non obese and the obese, should we use uh, the same dose, 1 gram Q12, or should we use 150 milligram Q12, or that we should use like 200 milligram Q12? We don't know, and because there's no data for that. Let's go a couple more slides regarding to the um, antifungal and the antiviral. For the amphotericin B, uh, for is it lipophilic drugs? And there's a couple of studies actually it have been done on the animal models, not on the human model. And growth and associated found that liposomal ampho B actually distributed more into fat than the regular ampho B or the colloidal or the lipid complex that calibic complex is uh, amphosad. 
and the dose for the dose for the lys uh, liposome of amphibia B is based on the lean body mass with the correction of the the volume of the the, the blood volume. However, that's it based on the animal model. We don't know what the the human model is. So right now they're still using the total body weight for the dosing, and based on the, our the judgment to see the whether we should use 0.5 or the 1.5 milligram per kilogram. There are two. Antifungal fluconazole, of course, at the VA we use a lot of the antifungal uh, fluconazole. Uh, it's a hydrophilic agent and eliminated uh, mainly to the kidney. So we assume that there shouldn't be any problem with uh, an obese patient, right? But one study by Cohen in 1997, that he has one patient, 227 kilogram, and he dosed him the 12. 100 milligram a day, and he got the steady state concentration similar to the 400 milligram a day in the non-obese patients. So now that we uh, we think that we got the obese patient, we might to increase the dose. Fluoride, fluoride, one hundred. This is the uh, one study show that one uh, the patient have a 120 kilogram a dog with the cryptococcal infections and the, this uh, this uh, authors he found that volume distribution and uh, creatinine clearance normalize with corrected uh, when corrected for the ideal body weight so they recommended to use the ideal body weight for the dosing when we use the ideal body weight for the dosing this means that we don't have to worry about the obese patient but make sure we use the ideal body weight than the, the actual body weight. Antiviral. I found only one acyclovir. Um, there's no uh, significant difference between the obese and non-obese patient regarding to the pharmacokinetic parameters. So that's why they recommend to use the ideal body weight. We have uh, other antibiotics that we sometimes we use, uh, rifampin, streptomycin, etambutone, uh, Pyrazinamide and INH. We have a couple guidelines, the TB uh, 2003 and a long TB 2007. It's, it have uh, some of the information regarding to, uh, to the dosing in the uh, overweight adults. You will see that, it, for example, etabutone is separate into the like three categories that depends on the, uh, the, the weight range. The patient falls into weight range, uh, you can get the dose, uh, different dose. But the, this is the old study. He found this is this is uh, the dose based on the 166 kilogram patient who were treated with uh, tuberculosis and it was successful. And this author he used the ideal body weight for the dosing. And but that's why I put it in here that we don't know which one to, which way to go. Uh, this. Uh, this author is to use the ideal body weight, but uh, it's a guideline. They have a different range, depends on the weight to the, to set up the, the the dose. So this is the last line. In summary, we know that obese patients have uh, some the physiologic changes. It means that it translates into the volume of distribution and the creatinine clearing changes in these patients. And when the patient gets sick, uh, it's becomes more complicated when the patient have a hepatic or the, the renal insufficiency that make the, the calculation become the complicated. And we have a possibility that we can incorrectly dose for the obese patient if we use a fixed dose. We use fixed dose, we tend to underdose it, but if we use the total body weight, we tend to overshoot. And we, as I mentioned before, we have a limited data for the antibiotic dosing in the obese patient because we have only few small pharmacokinetic study and a few case reports. It means that if you don't say when you see that there are no data, it doesn't mean that it's record or said that no dosing adjustment. It doesn't mean that uh, we don't have to adjust it because it just have no data for it. So important thing is we have to 
to the appropriate whether ideal body weight, adjusted body weight, or the total body weight when we know the patient. Lucky the couple of the many common the antibiotics have been using the recently, for example, like vancomycin, uh, daptomycin, for example, we use the total daily body weight. It's easy to calculate. But for some, we need to adjust such as like uh, aminoglycoside, uh, penicillin, or the cephalosporin or the fluoroquinolone, uh, we have to use adjusted body weight with the correction factor. And that's the end of